welcome back to Jack of All Trades, New Hampshire. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my Generac 15,000 watt portable generator, and I'm going to be giving you tips on how to set it up, and also the cheapest way to legally set it up to your house. Check it out. So here we have the Generac 5734. It's a 15,000 watt generator with a 22,500 uh, starting watts or surge surge watts. We've got it out here today because I have to do maintenance on it. A uh, generator like this, you want to run every three months to make sure it's up and running. Make sure the battery's getting charged. I typically run it for about a half an hour. Uh, it weighs 370 pounds empty. Right, no fuel, but it will hold 16 gallons of gas, which is huge. That's more gas than my car holds. Anyway, uh, this thing will run my entire house, uh, no problem. We can exact, we can run everything that we need in the house with this generator, and uh, just live our life as normal, even during an emergency. Full throttle, it'll run about 10 hours on a tank of gas. I've got about 60 hours on mine. I use the 50 amp connect for my house, uh, but you can get by with 30 amp on a lot of applications. If uh, if you're watching this episode just to get some information on connecting it to your house, just know that in most cases 30 amps will work just fine. You might have to be a little critical of what you have hooked up, but in an emergency situation, I think people are going to be like that anyway. Uh, so anyway, you can see we have a 240 30 amp and a couple 120 30 amps, and then I got the the big boy here that I use. And then you have some small receptacles with some GFCIs. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and start it up and run it. And uh, and I'll show you a, a test of, of what it sounds like. It's an electric start. Okay, so one disadvantage of this unit here is that it, there's no pull start at all. So if you got into a situation where you was batter, your battery was dead, you would have to jump start this with a car, which it will do. It has a 12 volt battery. Okay. And, uh, you know, just in case you need to move it, it has this big hook, which I use to actually tie it down uh, so it doesn't walk away. All right, let's give it a whirl here. So we got the de-icer here we have to turn on because it's below 40 degrees. It's actually uh, about 20 degrees out right now. Okay, and then we, we pull the choke in to get it started. And you just hold this button down until it starts. Alright, so we're going to walk away from this a little bit so I can speak. So, it is loud. Um, when we have it on outside, it uh, it is loud enough to hear on the inside of the house. And we got a pretty good insulated house. Um, we, live, we live pretty far from our neighbors though. Um, probably a good 200 yards from each neighbor. So, um, we don't really have to worry about disturbing them. One thing you can do for a generator though, if you live in like a smaller area where your houses are more compact and tied in is uh, get like four by eight sheets of plywood and lean them up against the generator on the sides. What that'll do is that'll divert the sound waves into the ground. It helps soak it up. It actually works pretty good. I've done it here. But um, uh, some things to keep in mind here. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you the, uh, the panel on the inside and how we hook it up to the house. It is uh, easily the cheapest way to do it. There is no automatic switch though, so you do have to come out 
and you do have to pull the generator out of the garage and hook it up outside. If you're a small person, you do need to keep in mind that uh, if you keep it in a garage and the power's out, you're not gonna be able to open the door unless you have one of those fancy battery backup uh, garage door openers. I, I don't have one of those. But you're gonna need to be able to pull the door open and hold it open so you can pull a generator out. So one thing I made sure I did here, I load tested this to my house when we first bought it. And I made sure it could run absolutely everything. The well pump, the electric stove, the heat. Um, put, we turned most of the lights on. It didn't even blink with that, um, with that, with that scenario. So um, you wanna do that. And we also ran through kind of like an emergency uh, plan. I, I think that's probably just the military in me. You know, you don't wanna practice this when you need it. You wanna practice ahead of time when you don't need it. So you can kind of pick out all the faults um, and have a plan so we kind of ran a situation where we cut the power off and we pulled it outside me and my wife and I wanted her to be able to do it in case I was out of town to see if she could handle it and she could she could manage um, but some things that to keep in mind is like we have a battery backup for our uh, electronics inside and so this generator wasn't producing uh, a pure enough 60 Hertz and I'm, I'm trying to explain that the best I can. But anyways, it interfered with our battery backup. And it might just be because the battery backup is, is kind of a little cheap one. I think it's an Eaton. But um, it, uh, it interfered with that a little bit where the, uh, the battery backup kept thinking that it wasn't getting a, a, a solid enough power source so it would cut off. Uh, but other than that, it ran. Um, I got a decent enough cord here. I'll show you to go inside and um, Let's go kick it, kick the idle down. It does, it does have a silent mode. We'll go do this, and then I'll take you inside and show you what the interlock looks like, all right? All right, so it's on idle right now, all right? Idle control is on. Once you put a load on this generator, it's not gonna sound like this anymore. It's gonna be louder. So I'm gonna kick this off, and we'll step back and see how loud it is. Alright, so that's how loud it will be when it's actually hooked up to your house. Um, so some things that I want to I want to mention real quick here. You never want to turn the generator on while there's a load connected to it, and you never want to cut it off with a load connected to it. And what I mean is, is you don't want to have it hooked to the house. You don't want to have it hooked to the house already when you start the generator up. And when you kick the generator off, like say you're on, a, you're on some type of energy uh, conservation plan, which is what we have here in this house. Um, we would run the ha generator every few hours to get things up and running, charged, get the house heated, stuff like that. But we don't want to run it 24 seven. If you're on some kind of plan like that, you want to make sure you disconnect the generator from the ha house, which is the load, every single time you turn it off. Uh, because you could mess your generator up by, by starting it and stopping it with the load. You could also mess up some of the electronics in your house. All right, let's see here. I believe that it, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and kick it off and uh, we'll see what this interlock looks like and I'll explain to you what I had to do to set it up on the panel, what's involved with that. Um, I did read the NEC and I did pull a permit to install this. So it did pass all the electrical standards for my area. So this is probably pretty good for most areas. I can't imagine any place in New Hampshire is going to be uh, lax on the standards. But uh, anyway, let's turn this off and we'll go inside. All right, here we are at the power panel. And I just want to get started here and let you know that if you're not comfortable or you do not feel comfortable working on the power panel, that you probably need to have a professional do this for you. Uh, this is it's not anything uh, that I'm incapable of doing. So uh, this was pretty easy for me. So first thing you want to do is you want to, if you're going to get an interlock switch, you want to make sure you know what your power panel is. Now this one here says square D right here, or if you look on the inside, you can see that uh, each one of the fuses are square D, and sometimes there'll be a label somewhere else that you can find that says square D. But uh, there are different brands and that does matter. 
So make sure you, you do check that out. Now you can see here that I have a warning label on the outside that says that there's an interlock uh, on this. So um, that is a warning just to let people know um, what to expect. So uh, anyway, so what you wanna do here is, is to start off, I'll give you a brief demonstration of, of, of how it works. I'm not actually gonna use it, but you have to have a 50 or a 30 amp breaker here at the top of your panel. Okay, and this is gonna feed, this is always gonna be off until you're using your generator. And what this interlock does is it does not allow you to have your main power coming into the house and the generator on at the same time. And the reason is, is this protects anybody that is working on the utilities outside of your house if your generator is on and hooked to your house. It keeps you from having the ability to feed power back into the power line system. Okay, so let's see here. Do that a little better. Okay, so anyway, the way the interlock works is, is you would cut your power off. That would allow this to slide up, okay, and out of the way of this 50 amp breaker, and you would be able to turn this over and on, and it would power everything below it, or at least what you have turned on. Okay, so if you're, if you're someone that has a 30 amp and you have a big house, you're not gonna probably be able to run everything. So what you would do ahead of time is you would figure out which, which rooms you wanna run. You wanna run your fridge, you wanna run your, your uh, stove, your microwave, something like that. You wanna figure that out ahead of time and have that planned out, okay? So the way this is installed is this actual panel has to come completely off, right? And there's gonna be screws on around it, okay? You gotta take all those screws out. There's usually six, okay? Get all those out. These interlock switches come with a template, all right? It's a sticker that you put on and you drill holes, okay? I had to drill three holes in mine. You put this on, screws back in. There's some, some nuts that screw to the back of it. And then you're all set, you have to move your 50 amp breaker to the very top so you might have to do some rearranging of your panel to get that breaker up top and i believe it gives you the option uh because some sometimes you're going to have a switch that throws up and down and then sometimes the switch left to right like mine so it, it will give you the different option there uh that the actual um actually hold, hold on i think i got it right here look it pays to never throw anything away all right, so this is the interlock that I purchased, and I got this off of Amazon. I believe it was forty dollars. So um, it's it's good. I mean, it's very simple, right? So this one's made for Square D, and it says right there Square D. It's real simple. It's just sheet metal, and um, um, it is automatically approved. It's it's automatically uh, approved for code, so you don't have to go through anything special. Uh, when the inspector came out here to look at this, he didn't have any questions. He opened it up, saw that was there, saw that I had the sticker attached, saw that I had my generator labeled on my panel, he was done. Okay, so to install this, after you get the switch on, to actually install your generator, right, to power it, you're gonna have to have some way to feed this 50 amp breaker. Now most people are either gonna have an automatic switching panel that detects when the power's out, right, so it'll switch it on if you have things hooked up already, or you're just gonna have a, a disconnect and a connection box, out, box outside. So that's what I did. So this was 50 amps, so I ran six gauge wire, and I actually cut a hole right here. Let's see if we can see that. So yeah, I cut a hole right here, all right? And I screwed through the house, I, I drilled through the house, and I ran flexible conduit from from the, the actual power plug-in box on the outside of the house, and we'll show that to you right here. All right, here on the other side of the wall, we have the, uh, the actual connection box. Real simple. Just on the other side of the wall, here is the panel, uh, the electrical panel, so it's real easy to set up as far as just putting a, a hole in the wall, making sure you mount everything up to code, and, uh, and running the wire. So let's go look on the inside. Okay, so that actual, that's actually hooked to the flexible conduit, and that flexible conduit comes in and has one bend, just a simple 90 degree bend, and it goes into the side of the panel here, 
and I feed the six gauge cables in and it goes right up to the 50 amp, 50 amp breaker. Okay, you have to have it fastened at the back of that plug-in box and you have to have also have it fastened in the panel here to the side of the panel. Now what, what something, if, you, if you're planning this out, something you may not know is there, there's going to be joists on either side of this, okay? And there's probably even going to be one on the bottom. So keep that in mind. You might want to look, if you have the ability to look, um, they may not be at the top because all the wires come into the top usually for the house. But, you know, each system setup is going to be differently. It's going to have to be connected to the frame of the house some, some, some way. So they're typically on the left and the right, and that's going to be something you have to drill through. That's why the hole I have here is so big, so I could fit a drill in there and drill that out. You might be able to, to route it through the top. That could potentially work. So <coughs> that is how you set this up. It's very simple, very cheap. Um, I can tell you that this was about 40 bucks. The, um, the connector outside, the actual plug-in, it's a bit hard to mess with with six gauge wire. You might have an easier time with, um, with a 30 amp, which would probably be 10 gauge. Um, you'll probably have an easier time bending that around. I had a, a mess of a trouble, <coughs> trouble with that, but it, I got it done. Um, I believe that connector out there was close to 70 bucks, all right? And then the six gauge wire only needed about three, two, three feet of it. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's in all, you're gonna be spending less than 120 bucks to get this all set up and you'll be, you'll be good to go. All right, we're back out here at the generator. I wanted to discuss one more thing before we go and it's kind of a controversial one and I really hate to wade into it, but I wanna, I wanna maybe give you some uh, idea of, of what you're dealing with as far as the dangers of, of some of the things you see online. So uh, in doing my research, I saw that a lot of people are uh, hooking generators up to the plug-in for their dryer in their house and running that in an emergency situation or maybe not even in an emergency situation, but uh, feeding the power into their house in that manner. So yes, that, that will work. Um, the problem with that is, is, is if you don't have the interlock or if you don't have something that's cutting the power out to the, 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 the actual network of elect electrical cables and stuff in your neighborhood, or in the city, uh, all you're doing is, is potentially backfeeding electricity into that network and causing harm to someone who's working on the power lines or wherever it's down, you know? And another issue is, is, is the safety for you because what you're gonna have to do is, is here with my generator, I have some pretty robust cables, right? So when you do that, you actually have to have a cable that has two of these, two male ends, right? No female, because your dryer your dryer is actually going to be a female, so you have to hook a male into that, and your generator is also a female, so you have to hook a male into that as well. So what happens is, is if you plug this in your generator and it's running, the other end of this is just going to be waiting to barbecue you, right? It's it's electricity. You're gonna you ground that out, and it could kill you. Uh, real simple. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, will it work? Yes, it will work. Uh, essentially, your what happens in this case is is that your actual dryer um, circuit breaker on inside, which is typically like 20 amps. Um, <coughs> actually, no, no, it's higher than that. It's, it's like 30 amps. So that dryer circuit is actually gonna take the place of that generator circuit that I just showed you. And uh, if you actually had to do it, you need to cut your main breaker off, make sure you have your dryer one on, and then feed any of, uh, turn everything else off and only turn the ones on you absolutely need. But then again, you, you absolutely need to understand uh, the dangers that are involved with doing that. And um, it, it really could cost you your life. All right, that's all I got for you on this episode. I hope you learned something. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We are getting really close to the 100 uh, subscriber mark. I'm gonna be taking a hike up in the mountains as soon as we hit those 100 subscribers. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So we're at 82 now, I believe, 83. So we only have 17, 18 more to go. And we need to hike up there when there's snow because I want to see what's running around up there. I have some uh, trail cameras that I've been using kind of close to the property. We have some really big coyotes out here. So uh, black bears, all kinds of crazy stuff. So anyway, I uh, hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.